a lane, a pain in the lane. We'll put it that way. And as we were discussing, the speed of Dota has increased, and winning a lane is a great step in getting that snowball a roll. And on the other team, we have Vengeful Spirit, a hero who, whose aura just is just a great flat benefit. Doesn't need items right there. Ideal position five, but high damage on Magic Missile, and the ability to save someone with her ultimate makes her a valuable addition to any team. She's been seeing some love in the patch, and due to that, she's been seeing some love by getting picked. Wraith King. Ooh, a hero that has obvious counters, but a hero that can easily steamroll a game if left unchecked. Farms decently fast, good stats. When he's ready to fight, he's ready to fight a serious ultimate. It is a bit slow, but it looks like he'll have a lot of people to make space and allow him to hit a lot of creeps in the early game with Ogre Magi and with Clockwork. Two heroes that are going to be making space because that's essentially what they do in the laning phase. It's their job. Juggernaut's picked up. A great Diffusal Blade carrier. Could even go Manta Diffusal Blade from multiple um, sources of mana burn against the Wraith King. Um, Ogre Magi's Ignite and Wraith King's Wraith Fire Blast are both pretty slow moving projectiles, allowing Juggernaut time to spin to disjoint them. Although ideally, Juggernaut uh, isn't using spin just to disjoint. Juggernaut also has the ability to deal with Clockwork because Omni Slash doesn't really care if he's in Cogs. But there's also potential for Clockwork to react by dropping Cogs while Omni Slash is in his ability to set up fights with War Stomp, a long duration AoE. Stop. I can't hear you, Rex, right. by the way, if you've been talking. Okay, so hopefully that does. I actually am very confused as to what's going on because you're getting fully picked up here in OBS. Interesting. Maybe it's a false alarm. No, I checked, I checked the stream. He definitely could not Hello? hear you. Oh. Weird. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to check in here in about three minutes or so because we have that delay. Interesting. Well, I guess we can just keep our chins up and we'll keep watching some Collegia Dota until then. Um, I'm thinking maybe I just need to... I can hear you find it. It's got to be OBS, though, because I can hear you find here in Discord. Um, I, I might... So. I might need to just kill the stream a second and relaunch OBS, maybe? Do what you gotta do. Uh, say something real quick. Hello, this is Carlton. Uh, okay. here I am talking. Hello. Yep. Yeah, I think you're good now. Um, alright. Well, and unfortunately, the stream is gonna deal with a little bit of double talking there for a while. Um, and so my apologies about that. But, yeah, it looks like it was OBS. I tweaked a couple things and it was getting a weird echo. Um, and picking up low, so I just reset OBS. I think we should be good to go now. Uh, should be coming back up here in a moment. And so what have you been talking about with this draft? What's going on here? All right, so did we? Did anything I say get picked up? I can go over it again quickly. I think it probably um, did, but it might have been talked over by the stream sure. audio playing back. Well, D Juggernaut's a great pickup here. Uh, I was talking about because he he's a Diffusal Manta is a common build. Diffusal Manta offers three sources of mana burn for Wraith King. Juggernaut also can use his spin to go Magic Immune and dodge the slow-moving projectile that is Ignite and the slow-moving projectile that is Wraith Fire Blast. So Juggernaut's a very safe pick, I feel. He has a lot of initiation, a lot of frontliners, and Shadow Fiend will round that draft off nicely. Shadow Fiend is a very high damage hero who's going to benefit from uh, Vengeance Aura more so than... Most heroes, but Vengeance Aura overall is just a massive damage increase. What I see here is an in insane laning phase from the bus drivers, and that's going to create a lot of space for Wraith King. However, the weakness is it almost feels like they put all their eggs in one basket, basket with Wraith King. Obviously, it's going to be a Silencer core, but Silencer doesn't have any innate mobility, so Silencer cores are easy to shut down, especially when you have a Centaur with a Blink Dagger, a Swap, um, yeah, very easy to run down here. He doesn't have yeah. very defensive um, supports either. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to have Bloodlust to give him a little move speed, and that's that's about the extent of it. Definitely. I think, this the like many of the games we see in this patch, Wivrex, I think this game is going to be... The laning phase is just going to be insanely important, and that's just because I see Rutger running into issues with... Uh, their cores in the mid game. Clockwork is not really a source of damage as the game goes on, so it's going to be on Wraith King and Silencer to do all the damage. Heroes that can do damage, but also heroes that are not the most difficult heroes in the game to shut down. But um, 
behind Ogre Magi, behind Clockwork in the laning phase, and AA synergy with his team, Rucker has potential to have an insane laning phase and just set them up to steamroll over uh, Villanova. And I'm sorry, um, Villanova is on Dire, correct? Or Yes. Yeah, okay. Good, I have that correct. Well, perfect. All right, and here we go into the game. Once again, as a league game, we like to introduce you to the players, let you know who is playing. It is going to be Storm Soldat, Storm Soldier on the clockwork. Ogre McGee will be played by Kaz, Kaz Khan. We have Lefty on the silencer. Meanwhile, Wraith King will be played by Yahan. And finally, Timbal on the Ancient Apparition, who is in a bad spot right here. Will get found. Uh -oh. Probably won't be able to get downed, though. Anyways... With that escape, our boys on Villanova, we have Scotch Clerk on Jakiro, too hot to handle, too cold to hold. Juggernaut, gonna be played by Who Am I, one word. Shadow Fiend, the lane man himself, being played by Wind with a capital W, capital D. Uh, Vengeful Spirit, being played by just little old Mike, and Centaur by uh, Sir Itchy Bum. Sir Itchy the, Bum. A long dynasty of Sirs, of Knights. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was not even ready for that. If Juggernaut. If heroes are going to get first blood in this game, I would say Ogre Magi and Clockwork are a, both great picks. To, to get that first blood? To get that first blood, and that's what we saw or didn't see there. Uh, I was not ready for that. that even, even with the Blade Fury going out, he wasn't able to escape that. I I'm really wish I hadn't missed that now. Yeah, that's uh, anything that involves Juggernaut is usually really fun in the early game. But, you know what else is really fun? Casting this game with you. Aww. Oh, what else is fun? It's five players in the mid. <laughs> I was just going to say, oh my god, we have a... We got a, a showdown mid lane. So, Ogre Magi is just insane. This is level one. You can try and fight Ogre, but no one's going to beat him. He's just, he's too much. His stats are insane. High health regen, high armor, high damage. He doesn't care. Ogre and Jakiro just duke it out while the two mid laners just kind of hit creeps, just doing their job. Jakiro, yeah, taking a lot of, uh, a lot of ignites here from Kazkan. Kaz is going to pop his clarity. Looks like he wants to go into top, see what he can make rustle up here. <clears throat> Storm Soldier needs to be very careful because with a Vengeful Spirit and an Ogre McGee, nope, Ogre McGee is back to the mid. Yeah, I think Ogre needs to sit mid and just abuse. He doesn't want to. Well, he's level one, which is, uh, I mean, he's he's just insane at level one. And I don't. I think he wants to spend his time at level one uh, around enemy heroes, not walking between lanes. Top lane is scary though because of the the Vengeful Spirit Magic Missile into Juggernaut Blade Fury, but on the in the bottom lane, we have Wraith Fire Blast into Cold Feet against the Centaur. So there's synergy here, and the off laners really have to be careful. If we see top lane, we might have some action. Oh, yep. Mike is going to put a Magic Missile there into Storm Soldier. Storm Soldier's trying to chase him down. Who am I? Comes in. He's ready to get some hits, but another kill from Storm Soldier. God, Battery Assault is so crazy at early I think levels. In, in almost any situation there, Jugger, any other situation with other heroes, Juggernaut made the right call, focusing on farm and just using the space his support is making. But not when against a, a battery assaulting Clockwork. You have to go and share the damage, I believe, or else you're going to have that. Uh, Clockwork just kills Eventful from full health, even with Magic Missile, because Battery Assault does so much damage if the damage is not split between multiple targets. But I think they've learned, and now they have a Jakiro up. Even though Jakiro doesn't have much mana. Or HP. He's got to be oh, careful now. They're going to throw. He's going to go on to Scotch Clerk. Thing. Absolutely. He thro throws down the cogs. Scotch Clerk's going to have a hard time getting out. Gets hit by the cogs, and now he just makes his way out. Storm Soldier, having the time of his life, just being he's able to be it. aggressive into a tri-lane. He's just like, yeah, sure, I'll fight these dudes. This is the dream. He's got his boots already. Oh my, this is the dream. You you have three heroes committed. Kazkan is coming in on a Shadow Fiend. He's ready to fight now. Beating him up. Jakira has to TP into the mid. Wind taking quite a bit of damage. They won't be able to get any kills out of this, but it's quite a bit of economic regen damage that they've been able to do. And even Timble showing up here well, in the mid. Some too. Getting experience early on as AA is extremely important. Your ultimate timing 
is is just a huge part of your hero. Completely changes your playstyle, <clears throat> and it completely changes the playstyle of your team. Storm Soldier is just storming this beach. He seriously is. That he's he's battering and he's assaulting everybody top lane. Even the Juggernaut has died to his robotic fingers, his soulless robotic hands. Oh. We can see some action on Centaur, or maybe on AA bottom. It looks like Villanova is changing their strategy. They can't handle Storm Soul that. The ward scouted Vengeful, so Rutgers knows Vengeful is sneaking around. But it is just level 2 Vengeful. I think they could kill him right now if they scout him out at the bottom lane. Kimble is going to find him. Oh. There's a couple shots. They've got the... the uh... Wave into, blade. there goes the magic missile now. Sir Itchy Bum is going to be able to get him as well. Oh, Jahan no. is just going to turn around and go on to Vengeful Spirit. Little drag, or little Skelly's getting pulled out now. Body blocking him up, hit, getting him with the hits. There's another wraith, wraith Fire Blast and now. Jahan's chasing him down. He does have a hoof stomp. We'll lose Storm, uh, who am I to Storm Solda in the top, meanwhile. And Sir Storm Itchy Bum does. Oh my gosh, is he the carry this game? He is, he is now. I almost wish he wasn't going for such utility build. Mid lane, though. Silencer's not having fun. This is yep. what they need. He's just gonna TP out. One more shot will no do it. No Storm Soldier <laughs> TPs, though. He's gonna get the hookshot forward already yeah, level 6. Yep. Absolutely has, I think. He's trying to make his way out. One more shot will do the trick. No! He's not burning down either. Getting away with 10 HP while Timble and Kaz Khan come in. But now Wind is ready to tear down this Ancient Apparition if he's not too careful. Kaz Khan does find that ward. And will de-ward it. Fight recap, Bottom it's gonna lane, be... We might see oh my goodness. Encounter. Oh my goodness. Oh, not Yahan, Wraith I think, is fine. Up. Yeah, he's a quick skeleton. Wraith, sorry. Sorry, Blizzard. Wraith. He's a quick Wraith King. Ha, <laughs> sued. <laughs> Storm Soldier's oh, just gonna actually, shrine up. With how low he was, I think he could've... Oh boy. Oh, look at this ogre doing what ogre does. Although his face isn't really that important. Yahan, double and edge. No oh, they didn't hit the stomp. They didn't have the mana for stomp. Ogre's that means he's going to be jump. able to get out of there. Oh, gosh. The, the bird, the dragon didn't have boots, and the ogre had boots, and it was just a slow beat down for all the way from the rune to the tower. <laughs> the poor dragon just flapped away, but he couldn't keep up. Now Storm Soldier's back in the top. Oh, getting his catapult denied. Yeah. Sad. So when does... Alright, so Storm Soldier just queued up the mech. He's very close. 700 gold away. When does he stop... When does he sell the mech and buy the Dagon? <laughs> I mean, if you're having a game like that, tell me that's not the strategy. Uh, or at least, like, some right... You know, go for the... Go for the Mask of Madness. Come on. Yeah. You can farm and oh, you can beat yes. people. Yes. But uh, even though it is 7 to 2 and Storm Soul that is strutting his stuff with the battery assault, Juggernaut is top on CS with 39, not including denies, 33 on Shadow Fiend, and the third player, the top player on Rucker, is only at 29 CS. Oh right no! Now. Storm Soldier has to be careful. Okay, he hooked under the tower, and if he kept going, he would have got Omni slashed. Stampede oh, is used. Yeah, Stampede, they're chasing him down. They've got the magic missile into the double edge. We'll finish him off now. Yahan trying to go on to Mike. Mike getting slowed up a little. Storm Soldier still no uh, rocket bra, or not, excuse me, no hook shot. They will be able to get him. Oh, with the cogs, keeping him low HP. And Yahan is going to chase him down. He is the carry, just stealing it from Yahan yeah, there. Yeah, he just takes it right from him. Oh, and Kaz Khan now getting chased down by Who Am I? Oh, goodness. This is the kind of games. Fury? It was definitely a Blade Fury. No, for it wasn't. It was an Omni They're Slash. Happy with that. Omni Slash, yeah. Or, yeah, sorry, Omni. That was an Omni for an Ogre. They're not too upset. Oh, and there's a combo. Oh, they're bottom. gonna find Centaur. Yeah, they're gonna stun him up. They get it. Now Storm Soldier is here. Once again, trying to steal the kill with his cogs, but it, it doesn't even go to Yana because the Zimbal this time. Oh, oh okay. lordy, lordy. Smoke ink on an empty lane. Yeah, they're gonna get uh -oh. this. So they're gonna get. Wave is done for. They don't even see him coming. <laughs> they're gonna get the silencer. No, they're not, because he's taking out some ogres. <laughs> he's just walking around the jungle, going for a little stroll. <laughs> Look but... at him. They're up on this high ground, confused. Like, uh, 
They have the oh, players. Oh, now position. what? We're gonna see a scrap here, Wivrax. And now I here we go. Oh, oh, Hookshot's just barely gonna miss on the win. The whole clockwork is missing. Oh, Ancient Apparition's not happy, only being not even level four and a half yet, nearing the nine minute mark. No. Once Ancient Apparition is Ice Blast, Clockwork becomes even more deadly. So Ancient Apparition definitely wants to get that XP and become part of this game. You can see he's pulling here, trying to give Wraith King solo XP while he can collect the jungle XP, trying to maximize how much experience they can get out of the bottom lane. I like what they've done where Clockwork got a lot of levels quickly and he just transitioned that immediately into roaming. But yeah. you really want to put someone in that lane to make sure that those uh, that XP doesn't go to waste. I agree completely. What Clockwork did is perfect. He's a ganking hero. He got his spell, Hookshot. It turns zero, completely turns on, and he went around and started using Hookshot, getting more kills, and even just pressuring the other team. But the, there's three lanes, and that's the, the main source of XP in Dota. And if someone's not collecting the experience from lane, it's actually really hard to justify Clockwork doing exactly what he's doing. Yeah, playing Ogre, directly. Ogre was there, but he did, of course, go down. The triple ray is going to be more than enough to take down that Ogre. Now, one more shot into Lefty could do it. He's just going to TP out, make sure he gets away. Um, Ogre died, but he could have gone straight back to that lane with no Omni Slash. He would have been a lot harder to kill. And obviously, you can't let AA go there. Like, what's AA going to do except die a lot? Well, if A can stay alive, I think that would be huge. I think that was best case scenario, honestly. If A could have just leached the XP. Maybe, like, send him through the trees. We have a Midas picked up on Wraith King. I love that. I feel like Midas is just... is is a... is a, is a, is a great item on Wraith King, even with... Um, oh, jeez. Yeah, Han's got to be careful. Magic Missile coming Midas out. No, Scott. Item, I'll tell you that Scott, much. yeah, absolutely not. Now Wraith King is going to get caught. They've got the ult. double veg. Oh, he does have. He's going to go around onto Jakiro. Jakiro gets frozen up by the cold feet. One more shot should do it. Yahan once again actually getting the kill this time. Burning down to the Wraith Flyer. Turning it around onto the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful trying to throw the wave there out. But they will absolutely get him. Now Storm Soldier. Showing why he is so feared. Gonna hookshot forward onto two and he gets him up. The Death Queen putting him pretty low. Sir Ichibum will get that with the double edge, but could be dying now here. Another Wraithfire Blast is coming through right now. One more shot should be able to do it. Actually, they're just gonna let him burn down to the Ignite. And Yahan even getting that kill. After all those kills that were sold, so we and they commit the Omni Slash for just the Omni for Ogre, close. Omni for AA. They're making their way down the ranks. Yeah, it was almost a guaranteed kill on the AA. Oh no, oh, he's gonna no. get the invisibility. Kaskan is gonna make it out of there. He need it. Wow. Oh boy. Silencer. Oh my God, that was insane. Shadow Fiend showed up ready to rock, and this Ogre just walked right out of the trees with Clockwork there. Sorry, didn't go according to plan. Did a great job taking out Wraith King, which is especially when you have a Midas. Midas is not a fighting item; it's really easy to punish. And the problem is, Wraith King had his ult, and they they did a great job blowing him up. But Wraith King just came back with his ult and returned the favor. Just blew the blew Villanova right back up. So Wraith King picked up the Midas, and he has the Clockwork making a ton of space for him. So I think this Midas is actually going to work really well. Um, Wraith King is also has queued up power treads, even though he has more than enough gold to buy them. So I think what he's doing is he has these queued in case he finds himself in a dilly of a pickle. But he's gonna probably save for something maybe like a Radiance, or if he wanted Blink Dagger, I think Storm he'd get Soldier it now. could be some trouble. They've got the dual breath into a mic, is gonna get the magic missile. And now who am I comes in? They've got Oh the cogs are gonna buy him just the right amount of time to get into the trees and get out. Storm Soldier playing out of his mind. However, they get a Centaur Hoof Stomp. Now a Double Edge. Storm Soldier is going to use his Hook Shot to come in and do a ton of damage. Now they're using the Stampede. They want to keep going, but they got to be very careful right here. They grab two. Yahan ready to throw the damage in. Sir Itchy Bum could go down any second. Storm Soldier still alive. Finally, Sir Itchy Bum goes down, and the Wraith King is going to be able to pick up double with the raise. Yahan still ready to fight. Gets the Vengeful Spirit Kill. Wind D. Wind now has the cold feet on him, is just going to walk away, and that'll be the end of the engagement. Ooh, that was a pretty crazy fight. The The first cog was insane. It bought Clockwork a lot of time. The second cog might have been a little bit more of a death wish. Uh, looking at the fight recap, the teams went actually almost exactly even. Uh, losing position three in a position five-ish. Not too big of a deal, but Shadowfiend got both the kills. But for Rutger, Wraith King actually got both the kills. So that's, it, it just went 
kind of well for both teams. They didn't lose much. They gained a little bit. Yeah, it looked like it took a while for the rest of Rutgers team to get in there. Storm Soldier and the uh, and the Ogre were buying so much time, and even they committed. Yeah. A, they got they got them pretty low. They even committed the Rampage and got even closer to where the Rutgers team should have been. Uh, but there's just no one there. That seems like what the second Cogs was supposed to be about, but. Um, I felt that way as well. See, they had a lot of time to get some reinforcements in, but maybe they were just, they, really, they wanted to, I guess they prioritized just using the space to get farm. We can see that Silencer is fourth on CS, and he's 20 behind his Wraith King, who's another 20 behind Juggernaut and Shadow Fiend. Yeah, net worth wise as well, uh, thanks to those kills, Yahan is doing pretty good. Pretty even with uh, Wind as well. I hear another, there it is. They're going to catch Scotch Clerk into the cogs. He's trying to throw the ice bath. But Battery Assault won't let him. Oh, that's just, it's just like when you capture an Earthshaker and he just sits there trying to enchant his totem over and over, but he's getting interrupted. Uh, oh, they want Wraith King, who has his ult. They might find him, yeah. They're going to get a, plenty of raises wow. into him, but TPs are coming in now. Silencer is here. Silencer does have global, but no mana. TP enough was, TP was enough to scare him. Ogre bottom. Does he care? I don't know if he cares. He does not care. Mike is going to burn down to that I Ice Blast. Timble, very happy about that golden flux. Definitely. Absolutely. Positively happy about that. Ancient Apparition won as much experience as he can get. Every level in that alt is a huge deal. And he's going to go for a Yules first. So he wants to be a pub star. He wants to set up the Yules Cold Feet combo, even though he's only one point in Cold Feet. He's the carry now, just like we saw Clockwork. <clears throat> the good news is he will game. have that Yules, or that will be level 4 Cold Feet by the time he has Yules. Yes, likely. Probably. Uh, oh, poor AAs. This. Juggernaut's in a dangerous spot here. Uh, are you sure? Silencer looks like he's in a dangerous spot. Yeah, 134 seriously. Omni kills. Boom. From good Homie. Guy. Centaur is going to die, probably. Uh oh, that's not good. No, AA goes down in the bottom, and Sir Ichibum is able to make his way around. They're going to be able to turn around on a Scotch Clark, but they got to be really careful. Sir Ichibum is back. They commit the Macro Pyre, but it is kind of zoning one. They're just going to make their way across the river. Ice Path not going to latch onto anyone. Who am I? Wind. They don't have anyone else here with stuns. They got no Vengeful. So these guys will be back up onto their high ground, and they'll be happy boys. Definitely. Once uh, once a few of the spells miss, there's no way to catch. They need a, uh, they being Villanova, really need to grab that Blink Dagger on Centaur. Centaur went for the Hooded Defiance before Blink. It's really calm and it's a great item. It helps them fight. Ice Blast is coming in. Farm. It's going to hit onto two. That's going to force them to get back. And you got to remember right now, um, Wraith King and Silencer both have Midas's. So, um... If, as long as Rutgers can weather this, which it looks like they're doing pretty well, we expect, the, expect them to feel a little bit behind right now, but as long as they weather that, they're going to give themselves a good spike later on. Oh, definitely. They're going to they're gonna be catching up quick. Mike, oh, he tries to go for the swap out of the cogs, but just ended up swapping one side of the cogs to the other. Storm Soldat is doing an absolutely wonderful job making the space his team needs, especially with two Midases. Um, the... He's just, he's just doing exactly what he needs. He's building utility well, getting a little bit aggressive with his blade mail. I like that pickup. It's going to help a lot with... Uh, so Shadow Fiend went Yules. So Shadow Fiend is not able to kill Clockwork because Clockwork is going to have blade mail. Shadow Fiend will just instant kill itself. So it takes one target out. It also makes it difficult um, for Jakiro because uh, uh, Clockwork can stand in the macro fire if he wants with blade mail on. Uh, I think the blade mail fits really well. The early mech is a great pickup. Blade mail is a little bit more aggressive. Helps helps Clockwork do these aggressive plays that have been working over and over as we're about to see now in it as well. Yeah, so they're gonna have to use the stampede defensively to get on out of there. They do lose their top. Uh, Rutgers does lose their top tier one in the There's process. An on the shadow fiend. They're gonna do something. Nope. 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 Not gonna do anything. Storm, Storm Soldat on the Clockwork is just my my focus right now for the most part. He's just doing so much. He's always running around the map looking for something to do, helping his team out. We can see A is getting sold. Oh, out Yule's onto Ogre Magi. Oh, they immediately follow up the silence. Very good. Now they're not. Yes, there they go. They're going to go in and get the cogs onto Wind. Wind gets swapped out immediately, and they have the Macro Pyre as well. Not a great position to be fighting around this Macro right here. Lots of damage going into Rutgers. 
Now who am I going to be able to clean up the Ogre Maji and now Storm Soldier gets caught as well. Wraith King goes down, but he's got his ultimate, so he's going to be making his way away. But uh, yeah, Villanova is holding, keeping the pressure up in this game. It went well. Well, the, I think uh, at the start, uh, Clockwork wanted to push Shadowfiend back into his team, and Shadowfiend was a little bit too quick, and he got pulled into the middle of the cogs, which was actually a safer position. And then he got swapped out and was able to get his alt off on the sidelines. One thing you have to keep in mind: although Shadowfiend all can do a ridiculous amount of damage, it also um, it's it's. Oh, we actually have a fight going on. Yeah, Ice Blast gonna come in and clip Scotch with the damage. Or with the debuff, but not the damage. Now Mike, who is also debuffed, is going to take quite a bit of damage, and Kazkan will get that final Easy last hit. Um, Requiem of Souls isn't just a damage spell. It applies a movement speed and damage output debuff, and inside of team, it has a massive range. Inside of a team fight, that's insane. That's, that can be game-winning, just not from the damage, but from the utility of the spell. And having Shadow Fiend escape with one health and cast it on the sidelines is a huge deal. Where the hell did Shadow just go down? Oh, Storm Soldier! Doing his thing again. That's exactly yes. Hello, yeah. Shadow Fiend does not a lot he can do against the Clockwork unless he has. Uh, I guess he has to go for the Yules, break the cogs. Maybe he can go for a Hurricane Pike, or I just hopefully Vengeful's always there to swap him out. Temple's positioning up here on bottom. Okay, Yahan's gonna TP and that'll force who am I back. And that's it. The Radiance Midas. It's so good for farming, but it also makes. Uh, Radiant starts is one of the first step in making Wraith King a beast on the battlefield. Who am I hiding in the trees? There's four heroes around him. He's got to be shaking in his boots. Keep in boots. mind when you go for item builds like this, though, with Wraith King, that he spent all of his money on zero stats. Yeah, he's about to get power treads, but currently he has boots of speed, zero stats, quelling blade, zero stats, Radiance, and Hanamitis have no real stats on them. Power treads picked up though. Ooh, who am I gets found? He's gonna get stunned up. They've got the Wraith Fire Blast, but he should be able to spin away. He is making his way right now. Silencer has his ultimate. If he chooses no spin TP, they won't be able to get him. Close. In the meantime, Clockwork making more space by pushing a lane out. Brown player, Centaur has his Blink Dagger. This is gonna be the Blink Reveal. And that's it. Attacking creeps. Radiance Middle Tower has been denied. Interesting. Oh, AA getting that mid deny. Hello, AA. A going for the Midas as well. Hello, Rutgers. They like gold. Yeah, I think um, objective-wise, Villanova doesn't look like they are or are going to put, punish them very much. Storm Soldier is going to pop that U or that uh, Blade Mail, immediately throwing some cogs out, buying so much time. He's got the TP. They've got the Yules, but they're wasting. That was space. That was the most Bottom space lane. I've ever seen created. Yeah. While they're fighting in the bottom lane, Yahan's gonna fight into Who Am I? Who Am I's got it! Uh, got the healing ward up, but Lefty will be able to get the final kill there. That's a good amount of gold there for Silencer. I don't know if you who saw is... the, the beginning of that fight, but actually Juggernaut ran up and spun Wraith King, and Wraith King just beat him down through the spin and chased him off, forcing a Omni <laughs> Slash. <laughs> like, Omni Knight was not having any of that Juggernaut being in his lane. Dude, the smoke gang coming out. They're gonna find an orange player, not the most valuable kill. Oh, they don't yeah, want, they might they go for him? someone else. They don't want to I, right away, but yeah, Mike goes straight for it. He's bloodthirsty. So they go right onto the Ancient Apparition, and you know what? He just bought out the Midas recipe. He's not that worried. Rutgers doesn't care. They just revealed their location. They spent a smoke. I think Rutgers is completely... The only better outcome is no kill, but that's, like, not a big deal to, to Rutgers, in my opinion. A, I mean, they delayed a, his first Midas timing, I guess, but... I'm not too upset about that. Johan, Blink Dagger picked up. Another item with no stats, but still 2,000 life. Only power treads. This Wraith King's ready to fight. My goodness. Yeah, the Radiance Burn is obviously the Radiance Mischance. Will help him be a little bit tankier, yep. but only to right clicks. Um, but he can farm up a lot faster now, so gonna be going for a BKB next. Also, Radiance is just a great item on him, I believe. Yeah, it's a somewhat defensive item, or it's a, an entirely defensive item. Uh, the the BKB I'm talking about. So he's oh, yeah. not going to be this big swinging, swinging deck. He does have some decent attack speed. I mean, he'll do some damage with auto attacks, but you're right. He's not focusing simply on his auto attacks. And I think they're going to be fine with that. They're not a high burst damage team. 
So having Radiance and having uh, a Wraith King who can survive a long time because of his reincarnation. We might have a smoke a fight. Huge Storm deal. Soldier. He's out front. He finds the Scotch Clerk now. Oh, might, the triple. Comes in. Two into that. Now here comes the Ice Blast. It's going to connect onto three. All three of them go down immediately. And now they might be able to chase for another one. No. I don't think they're, uh, they'll be able to catch anyone else. Hugs his tail and runs. No, he sees his team get hit by Cogs, and he was already out of the fight. <laughs> he had something better to do. Oh boy, that was insane. That's what they needed. Three people hit by Ice Blast, two of them trapped in Cogs. That hook, hook shot into Cogs, like, cut that team fight off. Any hopes Storm that they had. Stormslot did a great job. He didn't immediately press it, he didn't panic. He held it for a second. He went for three, got two. Three of them ended up going in that ice blast, and the team fight went for in favor of Rucker swimming. Now they get a T2, they're getting a lot of damage, likely the tower. Two heroes are mobilizing, they're just little support heroes. Wraith King is almost double their level. Ice blast. And that'll be the oh, tier 2. Oh, oh Macro Pyre. And there they're out. Rutgers looks like they're ready to fight now. They're pretty confident, so they're probably going to go around and start claiming tier twos and, and really pinning this Villanova team. Oh, Villanova. What do we need? We need... We got a Yule's picked up on Shadow Fiend, but we haven't seen him use it to combo anyone. There it is. Scotch Clerk gets another hook shot on just... Or gets hook shotted from Storm Soldier. Poor Dragon. Sad boy. Oh, Sir Itchy Bum is going to get the hoof stomp, but has to make a hasty retreat. <laughs> Storm Soldier does the gut. Storm Soldier just dropped his Guardian Grease in front of him. <laughs> he's having fun this game. You know he is. He Rocket Flare is going to give him the vision. Beast. And now Yahan's going to be able to just fight. No, he blinks back, waits for the creep wave. They've got plenty of vision. Wind is sitting right in front of the Rocket Flare. Yohan's playing single player. Everyone's scared of him. He just goes and clicks on whatever he wants to click on, and no one can stop him. They're oh. gonna. They get. Oh, there we go. Wind is gonna try and fight on top of him. They use the global silence. BKB is well. used from Shadow Fiend, but it's just the first one now. They've got a Yule's. Oh no! Into the Requiem. They cancel it, but not quite. Storm Soldier. He's gotten taken out now. A swap on a Kaz Khan. <laughs> surrounded by five, and that was the defense that Villanova needed. Oh that man. Wraith King was made out of paper! He just got obliterated! He exploded! I didn't even see him! Just a pile of ash on the ground. Great use by Shadow. Great play by Shadow. Keeping his cool through the silence, using the Yules to set it up. My god. Rutgers, I think they thought they were in a much stronger position than they were. Clockwork dominated the early game. Wraith King dominated the mid game up until now. Five heroes versus three in the silence are all. Uh uh. All three heroes go down. Villanova walked over them just like walking over this middle T2. They're even going to get T3 damage because Rutgers got a little cocky with their play. Yeah. This is the Dota I like. They're going to get a, a good amount. This is going to go down if they don't fort it. There it goes. Fortification. Gosh. It still might go down. They don't want to buy got, back. They've got liquid fire damage on it. Yeah, this is this is yeah, down. They, get out. they don't have mana. Oh, one more liquid fire would do the trick. Oh, we got a hookshot forward. It's going to catch Jakira. Jakira's got inside of the cogs. The rest of the team is just going to bail. Like, sorry, dude. He's dragon. Clockwork gets on top of that dragon. There's not much you can do. We're getting a blade mail pickup queued on Centaur. What is Juggernaut? He has the man to defusal, as expected, against a Wraith King. We'll see how he goes. From there, Medallion picked up on Vengeful, classic item, one of the best position 5 items, high value, low cost, and it has synergy with their spells. Shadow Fiend is going to go for the E-Blade, I like that. Ooh, do I ever like that. Wraith King is, all, almost all their physical damage is from Wraith King. So being able to E-Blade Wraith King is going to set him up to take a massive amount of magic damage. Remember, double edge is magic. And um, it's going to cut almost all of the physical damage from Rutgers out of the game. The, the Silencer has a decent amount of farm, sitting third on net worth at 12,500, but he doesn't really feel like it. It feels like he's more of a hero that still just presses R. It's not really... He doesn't seem too scary just yet. They gave him the Aegis, though, so let's see how this goes. His next yeah. is going to be insane he's, for Rutgers. He's got Seven a decent lives. amount of stolen int, and he's got a 
decent amount of regular int as well, so hero damage, he's going to be pumping it out right now, but obviously that E-Blade will ruin that. Oh, we've got a hookshot forward. It's just going to hit the melee creep. Blocked! I think this is going to be the first fight we see where all five Rutgers players are showing up. Uh, AA is sitting on the back line looking for the long-range alt. Let's see what Rutgers can do with the Wraith King and Silencer at the same place. Last fight, they didn't have Silencer there, and the fight went quite, quite, quite well for Villanova. Silencer wants to get Shiva's, I like it. Counteract the minus armor. Lots of intellect makes him tanky. And an attack speed slow, never bad for uh, Shadow oh, yeah. Fiend. Shadow Ray's damage talent on Shadow Fiend. I love it. Smoke, smoke immediately popped. Oh, Scotch Clerk right, every Scotch. fight. Uh -hoo. He makes it out, though. They're going to use the Stampede to actually get everyone back to safety. Meanwhile, Juggernaut, he's pushing that mid lane in, seeing if he can take out that tier 3. They've got a TP back from AA. Manto Trying? Not if they don't hit the tower. Oh. There we go. We got a stun into Juggernaut. Juggernaut, he's going to have to spin up. He's going for the tower. He gets it. He's going to use the TP. Can they cancel it? They can't. Hello. What do you think? Oh, we have a fight going on. Wraith King, yeah, just got caught. He's being completely surrounded right now. Here it goes. Clockwork gets the stun, but right now they're caught inside of the Macro Pyre. They don't want to fight right here. A blink out from Mike. No, who was that? That was Shadow Fiend blinking out. Means that no damage is done from the Wraith Fire Blast, and they're going to have to sacrifice Storm Soldier, maybe, and see if they can get Lefty the hell out of here. Does a good job of delaying it up, delaying up the inevitable, but that gives his cores time to get the hell out of there. Villanova's playing this very well. That was well done by Villanova. I was excited. That was the first time I think we were going to see Silencer have an opportunity. Centaur was stuck in the cogs and Silencer was sitting on the side. He could have got a ton of auto attacks off and really would have seen the damage um, the Silencer can do with the items and with the space that's been made by his team. But um, Centaur just turned his blade mail on and Silencer just took probably took about 40% of his life bar off hitting the Centaur and then he stopped realizing it's not worth it. And again, Silencer wasn't able to output any damage. Put Rutgers on the back on their back foot, and Villanova just pushed forward, taking the kills. It seems if they if they can put um, reincarnation on cooldown at right at the start of the fight, Villanova is in a great shape to just take these fights. Oh, here comes damage on to Ogre Mag Maggie, McGee. Jahan's trying to fight, but he's pretty low. Actually, Ogre makes it out of there alive. And DKP charge is expended. Oh, they're gonna get. Oh no! Clockwork is so confident going in there. He just eats an Omni Slash all by himself. The rest are coming in, though. Here comes Yahan. He's trying to chase them down. But they've got the Stampede making their way away. Mike, they've got Sir Itchy Bum Yules up, but they've already, they're have already they already down one. So Villanova's going to Villanova stay on. Yeah? Or Rutger, Rutgers or Villanova? Ancient Apparition is going to caught in the Ice Path. Here comes. Yeah. That's two down now. If they continue this onslaught, they're, they'll be in a really good spot. Kazkon will be able to make it out of there with the with Lefty giving him the Hurricane Pike. But he gets spun down, and now they're jumping onto Silencer. Silencer does have that Aegis. Will go down. They've got Yahan standing around him, but all five of the heroes. Oh, here comes the Requiem. It's going to hit. Does the damage onto Lefty. And now they're just kind of walking around. Silencer's going to be able to use the silence, and he's going to clean up a bunch of kills now if they're not careful to pop. And who am I has to get out of there. They get some good tier 3 damage. It's going to go down to these catapults, but ultimately, no racks still claimed. That was a, a very good... They've evened up, if we look at the net worth chart, almost 8k in favor of... Uh, of excuse me. Who's... Uh, no, not Villanova. Um, Rutgers. Rutgers, thank you. Uh, 8k in the, fa in the favor of Rutgers. Now pretty much even. Villanova's coming back. Keep an eye on the Shadow Fiend during these fights. His positioning is insane. That's why I was making the comment that I'm sh I, I was pretty sure they could turn it if they engaged and they managed to grab the A and turn it into a T3 tower. Shadow Fiend is playing very, very... He's... he's his positioning is just is, is insane in these fights. He's he's not getting caught out. He's re he's reacting with his blink dagger. He's he's staying just in the perfect range, and I I, I credit him to Villanova's success specifically in that fight. He's doing a fantastic job. And he's getting he can actually buy the E blade, but it'll cost him his buyback. So he'll pick it up soon after a little bit more farming.
until then, it's Roshan looking like. We still have a little bit of time until Roshan, but Villanova has made their way back onto the map. There's a lot of map control here. After all the work Storm Salat put into creating space and, and pressuring Villanova, Villanova still just owns the map just as much as Rutgers does right now. If not more, even. Juggernaut going for a butterfly. He has his blink dagger. I like that pick. What are we going to see? We have the BKBs finished. We're going to go to AC on Wraith King on Ancient Apparition. We're actually going to get a Kaya, interestingly enough. Um, I feel like Aghanims is kind of mandatory on that hero, to be honest. Uh, it just adds so long to the frostbite duration. I don't know how you can pass that up. Uh, AA, AA is going for an axe, isn't he? Oh, he is now. Yep, he just took the Kai off Q. Okay. Woo! Smoke gank. Maybe given away by Flair. Right now, though, Villanova's group is five, so smoke isn't super scary. Centaur trying to break the smoke, standing on the high ground. Quite obvious as Wraith pushes up. Yahan by is gonna so get close stuff. Up. Now are they gonna go into all of them? They use the global silence, so no stampede right now. But very shortly. No nah, Centaur, yeah, Centaur War Runner. Oh, actually goes down! Storm Soldier is in the front. No, they use the Requiem. Yahan gets his BKB off. Now he's ready to fight. Gonna be able to blow up another one that's an eventual spirit down. Cuts the fight with an ice pass. Scotch Clerk trying to make his way away. And he makes it up to the high ground. <laughs> well, I could go down here. No, he makes it out. But they're in a very good position now to try and push the high ground. So they used um, Ice Blast and Global Silence and almost uh, didn't really accomplish much with it. They ended up taking the Centaur down. I was so sure Villanova would have been able to turn it after that, but Rutgers just hit BKB on Wraith King and ran at them, and, and Villanova wasn't able to deal with it. There's the yeah. coming out. Wraith King's ult is already backed up, so he can frontline this if he really yeah, wants they're, to. Rutgers they're going to have an, great position. an Ice Blast from home. Oh, a, a Hookshot comes forward. It's going to catch Shakiro. He's just going to cut him out with the cogs. And now they're trying to put the damage into the melee racks. Uh, but Yahan's going to go back. Lefty needs to be careful. Uh, I think they could have still fought that. They had Ags up. They've got the Ice Blast. It's coming in now. It's going to hit on the wind and Mike, it looks like. Oh, Mike just barely avoiding the damage. Mike. Mike. Come on, Mike. Well, we're going to have the game start on. I think Roshan should be up soon, so that's going to be likely the next objective. And Shadow Fiend going to just go farm. He's going for... Ooh, he's going for some magic damage. I like it. This is so, like the most maximum respawn, Rosh respawn I've ever seen. <laughs> so we're about to see a level 25 talent on Shadow Fiend, and I love the new 25s. What is he going for? Three damage a soul, or is he going for cooldown reduction with a BKB, a knee blade, and a Yule's in his bag? I think he goes for the cooldown reduction, especially with the items he's building. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think I agree. He's uh, with the E blade in there, you know, having extra right click damage. Isn't going to be the best, especially if you fail to blow someone up. Oh, there they go. Global Silence gets used. They've used the Stampede already, but now the Ice Blast is off cooldown right now. And they won't have it for another 10 seconds. This is pretty bad. Storm Soldier's going to go down. They already did get the Centaur War Runner, but now Yahana is coming in. The Requiem comes in, but uh, they get the Shadow Fiend. Now Yahan is just jumping in, going onto Mike. He's burning them down. Once they go on to Who Am I, Lefty is just barely going to escape. Every time this is what happens is that Yahan gets real deep into the team fight, while Who Am I is just in the back do doing so much damage that it really picks the, the, the fight apart. Yeah. It's... It's... Y Yahan is just... He's too much. They, so much is spent on him, and they don't get enough out of it. Oh, still... they oh they get the stun onto Centaur War Runner, but they want to chase down Who Am I. Who Am I is taking quite a bit of damage. They've got another Ray Fire Blast. There they go. They're gonna hit onto Who Am I. They hit him. One more shot's gonna do it. They finally get this unkillable man. Jeez, Johan is just Johan's just he's the juggernaut of this game. He just walks around and beats everyone's booty that he goes near, and and Villanova's put so much into shutting him down. 
so much, and they didn't even get him that fight. He's, he's, he is Rutgers. Like if 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 Raytheon has a good fight, Rutgers is gonna have a good fight. Not if, saying, not trying to discredit how well everyone else is playing, but if they push this now, they game, they're forced and buybacks. They're gonna do some good economic damage here. They they want the racks, and they might actually get it. They're gonna give it up. They're not buying back. Wow. They might go for more. That's a huge turn. Yeah, they've hey, got the they've got here. the creeps here in the bottom. Everyone, uh, no, there's really only two here. Yes, Villanova doesn't know that. We have reincarnation on Wraith King. Ice Blast. Lefty or... is just leaving Yahan to his fate. Ice Blast. Yeah, that's gonna hit a lot. He will be able to blink out of there, and he's fine. He give you charge. Gone and gone. So that in the meantime, pushing out top, almost has the Aghanims. That's going to be great against the BKB picked up on Shadow Fiend. A fantastic counter to BKB. These shrines are open, but they're not taking them down. Shadow Fiend, or Shadow Fiend, Wraith King, maybe if he gets his DD, we'll go do it, but... Oh, yes, please. It's actually better for Silencer. There we go. Damage. He has higher damage and he's ranged. Roshan, did they scout it? I think Ogre just missed it, actually. Villanova knows this ward is here. Let's see, and they found it. Let's go. Oh, but Villanova is ready for this. They saw it coming in. Ice Blast coming out. It's going to connect onto two of them. Who am I? Can't quite fight with the ice with the frostbitten on him. But no, they're going to be too late. Rush is going to go down. No, Yahan. Almost there we go. Yahan gets it. He's going to grab the cheese while they give Lefty once again the Aegis. Lefty goes in. He's getting lots of damage on the splash. Gets away with the Glimmer Cape. Now they got Who Am I already. Beginning of the fight. They're going to have to stampede and get the hell out of here. Wind doing the best that he can. Mike's going to retreat as well. Oh, Soldat's going to find Scotch. Yeah, Wraith King got the Wraith Fire Blast on death. I love that. Ooh, Soldier gets juked out a little bit by Scotch, so Scotch is going to be able to get back. They force buybacks both cores. No, just who am I? Oh. Did, uh... Lefty taking quite a bit of damage. Who am I needs to be careful? He's too far forward! They use... That was weird. The hook shot flew through him, but it did connect. <laughs> Gosh, that's a no buyback juggernaut, and they know it. Can they get creeps in the base, though? It's what a dieback jug, yeah. Yahan's jumping in. Look, he's just going to go straight in and fight. Creeps. Not letting him in. They've, the backdoor protection is down right now, though, so Yahan is not scared. Yeah. He's got ultimate. He's got cheese, so he's going to fight as much as he needs. E-Blade's going to hit him in the face right now. Sir Itchy Bum putting the damage into Lefty, but he's getting held up for a little bit. Sir yes, Lefty does have that Aegis. He has no problem dying right now. Yahan finally goes down. 30 seconds left on his ult, and Sir Ichibum calls it. It's GG. Rutgers is going to be able to claim game one. That was a great game. I have all points of that game were interesting. With Storm Soul, that's insane mid or early game, buying time for his cores, both his cores going Midas, using the space well until they until they don't, until they get a little cocky, get caught out mid, and we saw Villanova bring it back, as well as the second fight, Villanova started bringing it back. But Johan gets in there and he doesn't stop. Once Johan gets going, it's really hard to bring him down. Every uh, the only fights that went well for Villanova were the fights where Johan was taken out right away. I think that Radiance paid for itself and then some with its ability to farm both creeps and heroes that game. Villanova definitely had a lot of fight, but Rutgers was for the most part in control, and I think a lot of it is attributed to just how difficult it was for Villanova to deal with Wraith King. Yeah, I think one of the big problems from that game is that they had a pretty good advantage um, in the early game with so many of Rutgers picking up Midas's, but it didn't feel like they capitalized on it enough. Yeah, Wraith King only went down once uh, before he he got to his Sacred Relic, I believe. Um, so he only was attacked once with a Midas, and it's like Midas is not a fighting item. You can't make any argument it's for fighting. It's just the attack speed is the only thing you can say, I guess. If you see someone get Midas and just sit in the lane, I mean, they should be a high priority. They just spent uh, about 2,000 net worth on an item that doesn't help them stay alive. It just helps them uh, get gold. Yeah, so and that, that not even... Can be able to handle the fights. Yeah, and not even just deaths on, on the Wraith King, but, like, they didn't claim enough objectives. That's the perfect time to go take your objectives because yeah. the, the Midas isn't going to help you very much if you're now no longer in control of your jungle. Exactly. 
All right. Um, Good agree, synopsis. Yeah. yeah. Killed it. Killing it. Kill it. All right, everyone. That was game number one of Rutgers vs. Villanova. We are going to take a short break, and we'll see you guys for game number two. Thanks for tuning in.